Okay, welcome to the lesson. This is lesson 22, and we're going to continue our study of major and minor seventh chords in this next lesson. So you can see from, or listen to what I was playing at the beginning of the lesson there, to see that I was playing the chords that we were eventually going to learn in our lesson, and there's a lot of extra things I was doing with the chords to make them interesting, and you're going to be able to learn how to do that same stuff uh, with preceding lessons that I'm going to teach you. But a lot of it has to do with just adding notes and adding melodies within the chords that I'm playing. So we're going to talk about that. But it's important to get a foundation for all the proper fingerings first. And then I'm going to show you how you can elaborate and make the chords a lot prettier. But you can hear how great major and minor seventh chords just by themselves can sound in a nice progression like that. Like that. Okay, so let's, let's go ahead and review the two chord forms that we learned last week. And we're going to build on those her last lesson. We learned the, the caged uh, originated chord down here that became the movable shape that became a major seventh shape that was movable, the roots on the bottom string. And so we have a, cap a major seventh voicing we can play over the neck now on the sixth string. We also learned a major seventh voicing right here that originated from the open A chord became in a major seventh chord and now became a movable shape. And now we've got a fifth string root that we can play. So between the two chords, we get a lot of a lot of places to go. But what are we missing? We're missing minor seventh chords. So we're gonna learn minor seventh chords in that same, those same two forms. And I've written them out right over here. Okay, so let's take a look at what we've got here. You can see in this major seventh voicing, um, the shape is like this. Now, when you when know a little bit about music theory, you'll understand that a major seventh chord and a minor seventh chord are different in two main ways. A major seventh chord has a major third, there's the major third, and a major seventh, which is right here. The major seventh of the scale. Now, in a minor seventh chord, you're going to have a minor third and a minor seventh. But the fifth is common to both chords, so that note didn't change, and nor did the root. So, major seventh here becomes minor seventh. So there's a lot of ways you can play it, and there's more than one way you can play a voicing of minor seventh. I'm just showing you one way right now. But even right here, you could play with your thumb. You can play with second and third fingers. Those are the most common ways, probably right there. Okay. And then we also look at the board over here, and we can see our major seventh chord right here on the board. But once again, we know that a major seventh chord has a major third and a major seventh, and a minor seventh chord has a minor third and a minor seventh, which is achieved now when, by simply releasing this note here and letting the bar take over that note, which creates a minor seventh note. So now we have, so we had major seventh here become minor seventh. We have a major seventh here that became a minor seventh here. Okay, so now that we can make some mo movable major seventh chords and minor seventh chords, we've got a lot of pot potential here. Major and minor seventh, we can really get interesting with our progressions now. Okay? So you can see on the board, once again, I've written some more progressions to combine all those chords together. Okay, so uh, let me just fix this right here. Um, I think that looks about right. So <clears throat> let's go ahead and practice these together. Come up with a little groove here that sounds good. Um, I believe Oh, I don't know, maybe this one would be good. You can't beat a bossa nova, can you? So let's try this one right here uh, in progression number one. Let's just do a typical bossa rhythm. It's going to be like this. Okay, but now going to have to negotiate through the different chords. We've got G minor 7th on the next bar, so we have a choice now. We can go up here to 
play that, or we can go down right here. So let's, in this case, let's go down. So we'll go. Can we go back to the top again? So in the second ending, it went E flat major seven, which I also could have played here, or G minor seven, or down to A minor seven right here. So I can go B flat, A minor, or B flat, A minor. Okay, so I think I'll do it like that. Here we go. Two, one, two, three, four. also know we have another version of a major seven we can play here and we also could play minor sevens here and minor sevens here so you could start off D major seven here and then play G minor right here let's try that and then B flat major seven so you can go way up here if you wanted to um, it gets a little tight sounding up there so we're gonna play it down here and still play a minor right there okay here we go Two, one, two, D major. exercises but notice how clean the chords are that I'm playing I'm not I'm not hitting extra strings that are that are dead on my guitar I'm trying to keep it real clean and I'm not hitting the bottom end of the guitar too not too loud I'm not going right I'm trying to play play real even with my attack so it's clean right of each chord is similar. That's what you're trying to achieve, an even, clear sound, okay? Let's go to the next progression here. We start, start this one off on a minor seventh chord. In this case, you might even want to let the whole low E ring because you can play the lowest E string and let that ring open if you want. That might sound nice. And then maybe play C major seven right here because it, it's so close to the same shape, you can go to D major, right here, and play A minor 7 down there, or up here if you'd like. Okay, let's try another funky groove off me. my happening QY20 sequencer. <laughs> 